All right. Hey, greetings, Sunday school teachers across America. Mike Holmes here. Good to have you here on our YouTube channel. Today, we're talking about what makes a great Sunday school teacher. And we're, uh, you know, a lot of cool things that we get to do here. And one of them is spend time with the Sunday school teachers are talking to them about what, how to be successful. And we've been going through the seven laws of, of teaching that come from John Milton Gregory, written over 100 years ago. Powerful stuff. I want to encourage you to, to look it up. I'll put the link in, in the notes here. But we can learn to be the best that we can be. In fact, we have to be the best we can be. There's so much. It, it is not about us. It is all about them. It's about the kids and making sure training these children children in the way they should go. So when they're old, they'll not depart from it. So uh, anyway, I'm thrilled to be able to be with you folks here today. And I'm kind of excited to be uh, representing the Reach Keep Academy, which is our uh, our monthly training program that we have. And I'll uh, probably tell you some more about that, or you probably have heard about it. You can look some things up on our website at reachkeep.com slash academy learn all about it. Welcome aboard. My name is Mike Holmes. If you've not met me, I'm a pastor, a senior pastor. No, not senior, but what's the, what's the word I use now? Founding pastor. There it is. Get a little confused. I've been pastor for a long time and stepped aside. I have a new guy in our place He's doing a great job. I am the founding pastor of the Sinclair Baptist Church and uh, very excited to be able to have some time, spend time with you uh, doing teaching and training for Sunday school teachers, uh, pastoral leadership, uh, layman leadership, all sorts of things. Um, and be able to share just some of the things that we've learned over the years. I pastored for uh, uh, 13 years. Before that, was in evangelism for about 25, just church, 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 all over the country, and had some great opportunities uh, to to teach Sunday school, work with Sunday school teachers. I do a lot of Sunday school teacher training, and so that's what some of this summary is. So today I want to talk talk to you about the importance of, uh, well, what it takes to be a successful Sunday school teacher. And this is really the importance of this last law. We call it the law of review. And it is that the teacher must review the topics that have been covered. Every teacher that, that you've ever been to probably in, in some way or another has given you some type of a test. And they like there will be a test. There'll be a quiz. And I remember college professors saying, "We're gonna we're gonna ask you a question about this, or ask five questions about this chapter. Make sure that you that you have it all read. Very important because it helps us to grab hold of those things and and to really uh, to get it. So in Sunday schools, though, and in church work, we often don't do like, all right, sermon's over. Everybody take out a pad of paper, we're going to write the test, or, you know, we're going to pass out <laughs> blanks, the sheets, and you're going to fill them in. I, you know, people probably pay attention a lot more if we did that, um, but we don't necessarily do that. And, and I think there's some reasons we don't. I'll get to that in, in just a moment. Um, but it really, uh, testing and, and, and reviewing and all that, there's a lot of benefit to it. And I wrote down a couple of things in my notes, and some of this is just straight out of, of uh, Milton Gregory's uh, stuff that he came up with. It, it tends to, as we review, it tends to perfect, okay? Not make us perfect, but perfect. It kind of fine tunes that lesson. And, and it brings it into, uh, you know, a place where we have synthesized it down because now we have to bring it back out in some type of review. It then confirms that that we have been learning so that we know that that is the lesson. And then it has this idea of making it kind of ready and useful. In other words, it is you can you can pop off an answer here and an answer there and an answer there. Uh, in, in this in mathematics, it would be simple. If we reviewed mathematics over and over and then someone were simply to ask you, you know, what's, you know, two and two, you'd be able to say four, okay? It's ready, useful. You can, you do math all the time. In fact, you probably do math today a hundred times. You didn't even know it because you have reviewed someone took time to review and to go through that with you. And Sunday school teachers, we need to do the same thing. We need to make sure that we do that. Now, one of the reasons that I think we, we don't, I mean, we tend to, um, we don't do tests, okay? Uh, it's just sort of not in the culture of Sunday school or, or preaching lessons, you know, to, you know, uh, pull out the piece of paper and have uh, some type of test. So we don't necessarily do tests in that way. But I think one of the other reasons is, is the curse of familiarity. In other words, if you study your lesson well, as we recommended in our very first lesson, the teacher must know their materials to be taught. 
if you have studied your lesson really well and you know it, you have what's called the curse of familiarity. You are so familiar with your, your topic that review is almost seems like a waste of time. Now, that's where you have to transform yourself out of the teacher mode and into the learner mode and say, I am going to help these kids learn. I'm going to help these people learn. And I cannot take my own predispositions of all the knowledge that I have and just go, well, of course, David's in the Old Testament, not the New Testament. Uh, you know, you, you can't get that way. You have to you have to get to where you are you're thinking the way that they are. And so the curse of familiarity is is one of those things that we need to be very, very careful of. And you got to back off and put yourself into the position of the learner learner and what do they know and what you know should they be knowing and how can they you know apply some of that so let me give you a couple of of uh, what i call laws the laws that will help you sort of do the review okay and review and we'll give you some rules in a second here i just you know kind of when to do review and some of that uh, so hold on to the end we'll get kind of get to that but one of the laws is what we call the law of the emphasis and that is where you emphasize over and over and over the the thing that you want them to get. And so if like you were talking about um, David, how he went from being a shepherd to a king, all right? Uh, you could talk about now, boys and girls, David was, when he was younger, he worked with sheep and that's called being a what? Shepherd, very good. All right, we covered that four or five lessons ago. And now we found that he has a crown on his head, okay? And he's in charge of a whole kingdom. So that makes him a uh, King. All right. Very good. He was a shepherd. He went to be a king. He was a shepherd. He became a king. And you're emphasizing that transition because that's maybe what your lesson is that time about how God can take you from where you are and put you into, in, into you know, a place of leadership and use you in some way. So it's, it's what we call the law of the emphasis. And it's where you take a particular thing and you emphasize that over and over, and you don't just kind of blow through it real fast. Yeah, David was, of course, a shepherd, and then he became a king. Um, you you kind of belabor the point, as we would say it. Um, Milton Gregory uses in his book the emphasis of, like, uh, Genesis 1-1, in the beginning. And you talk about in the beginning, okay? And then you talk about, you know, how it all started. In the beginning, God, okay? And you put the emphasis on there. And then if you're teaching, in the beginning, God did what? He created. Very good. He created. In the beginning, God created. Okay, so that, that type of thing is, is what needs to happen. So the, the heaven and earth, you kind of work your way through. So there is the kind of emphasis uh, that you can do. So it's uh, just kind of one of those very, very important type of things, that law of emphasis. The second one is what I call the, the law of, of broad review. And this will help you when you're reviewing. And you, you just kind of go way back, way back, and you start out and you just kind of say, you know, hey, <clears throat> hey, let, let's talk about David for a second. Was David in the Old Testament or the New Testament? You know, primarily Old Testament, okay? Mention the new, but primarily in the old, okay? Uh, let's see, was he a king or was he a, a you know, a, a power, you know, let's see what I write down. Was he a friend of God or an enemy of God? Okay, he was a friend of God, okay? Uh, I get down a little further. Like, was he a king or was he a shepherd? It's like, Oh, he was both. And you kind of get, then you start to get people to synthesize what's going on. So you're doing the broader review. Um, don't be caught in your own knowledge that, of course, David's Old Testament. And of course, he's a friend of God and, and some of that. Okay. You need to, you know, really come up with a bunch of different questions. Was he good or was he bad? Was he helpful to the kingdom? Was he unhelpful to the kingdom? Was he a good example? Was he a bad example? And that is what, you know, what we call the, law, the laws of broad review, where you go way, way back, okay? Now, I'll give you a hint on how far to go back here in just a few minutes, but, um, but this idea of the law of broader review. So, And then the last one is just kind of that idea of the law of repetition, and this is where you take the phrase, and you use it over and over and over, such as in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. But like with David, he went from being a shepherd to a king. Let's say that he went from a shepherd to a king. Let's let's try just the boys. All he went from being a shepherd to the king. Well, there's girls, all right, girls, king, shepherd, king. Okay, so you know you can kind of do some of that, and you you you're using repetition 
to, to do that. If you've ever, uh, we homeschooled our kids um, and uh, when we did, we used Saxon math. If you ever use Saxon math, you know, they go back and they, they do repetition from the, the lessons that are, that you've covered, you know, four five, six lessons ago. And that brings us to some of the rules here. When you're doing repetition, you want to go back about five or six lessons from where you're at and flip through some of your things and kind of, you know, go back to where David was a shepherd boy and he, you know, saved the uh, he uh, saved the lambs from what were some of the animals that he a lion a bear you know uh, you know you could talk about uh, some of those things so you go back five or six lessons just look back through your notes and make sure that you're drawing some general things from five or six weeks back some more specific things from two to three weeks back. And then when you're just like last week's review, or if you just finished teaching, you would go from just what you taught, you know, 15 minutes ago and do that review. So the important thing is though, one of these rules is to have a time of review where you do it, because if you don't plan it in, it's not going to happen. One of the best ways to do this is on your board. Okay. If you have a whiteboard, like I've got just right behind me, you would script and just put some of those things out there on your board. What you're planning to do. We're going to sing a song first about, you know, only a boy named David. And we're going to sing the song about David. And then, and then I'm going to read the scripture about David. So you have song and then you have scripture. And then we're going to act out a little bit of the story of David, you know, doing something, Goliath or the guy gathering the arrows or, you know, something along that line, something that leads itself towards acting out pretty good. We're going to act out the story of David. Okay. Then I'm going to give you some new, a new story about David that you don't know. And then at the end, we're going to review and you have those words, you know, we're going to sing, we're going to act out, we're saying, read, act out, review, you know, you put all that in and then you know that you've got to review. You need a time uh, to review. And in that review, one of the things that really ties it together, and I'll finish with this, is the idea of making the application. And, and so when you are doing review, and again, we want to get the knowledge, you know, from their head down to their heart. And so you've got to get that down there. So get it down into their heart. Ask questions that tend to get you towards application, you know. So David went from being a shepherd to being a king. So what does that mean for us? Okay, that means that God has some leadership for us. Okay, what would be some things that we've talked about that are areas where we can lead? We can be a bigger brother. Okay, we can be an obedient son. Okay, we can be a good church member. You know, there's all sorts of things that you can do in that in that review. So make Make sure that you are taking time to review. It is the seventh and the final law in the session. Now, next week, please join us same time, uh, two o'clock Saturday. We're going to uh, come out and and give you kind of a an overarching review of all seven of the of the seven laws of teaching. Don't forget, I will put in a link here uh, to the original text of the seven laws uh, of teaching by, by John Milton Gregory. And you want to get those and read it. It's just very good reading uh, printed in the 1800s and directly towards Sunday school teachers. So um, if you find some of this helpful, give us a thumbs up. We appreciate that very much. If you uh, are in a position where you can share this and, and let other people know, uh, that would be great. If you hit that subscribe button, obviously that's uh, helpful for us here uh, at the Reach Keep uh, YouTube channel. So thank you. Uh, thank you so much for us, or thank you so much for us. Thank you so much for you. Okay. Thank you so much for joining us is what I meant to say. Anyway, thank you very much, teachers. God bless you. I've got to run and uh, you guys have yourself a great Lord's Day. And remember, if you want to be a successful Sunday school teacher, you've got to employ some habits of review. So this is Mike Holmes signing out. We'll see you next time.